Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create this money or coin counter. As you can see, we are using rupees and all of them are detected in real time. You can see right now it's zero. If I put in a five, it becomes five rupees. If I put in a one, it becomes six. And if I put in two more rupees, it becomes eight. So these are the three different coins that we are going to differentiate and we will use different techniques to differentiate them. And as you can see, if I keep adding, it will keep adding to the total count and it does not give bad results. So you can see it is quite good. We had a total of 34 and as you can see, it is quite stable and it is giving us the value of 34 again. And if I remove five rupees, you can see it becomes 29. If I remove two rupees, it becomes 27. If I remove five again, it becomes 22 and so on. So as you can see, it is quite stable. It is quite sturdy and it is good. So it is a very fun project and it is very easy to implement. So stay tuned and I will show you step by step how you can create this project and how you can use it with your own currency and create this project for yourself. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 30,000 classes. Skillshare offers courses in topics like business, creativity, and technology. So you can learn something new every single day. With classes from experts in their fields, you'll get the knowledge and skills you need to succeed. Plus, you can watch videos on your own schedule and access course material anytime so you can learn at your own pace. A good example is Simon Van Boy's course on the Writer's Toolkit. All of us at some point want to share our story and this is a great place to start. Skillshare is offering a free one month trial to their premium membership to the first 1000 viewers. You can get access to all their classes plus exclusive content. All you need to do is sign up using my special link in the description below. Take the first step and start learning with Skillshare today. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, do check out our premium courses that are available on our CVZone platform. Links are in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we will do is to go to File, Settings, and then we will go to the Interpreter, and we will click on add and here we are going to add cv zone we will hit install package and then we are going to install do we need anything else uh, no we don't need anything else but we do need to downgrade OpenCV because the newer version does not auto complete so we have to add that OpenCV dash Python so we'll click on that specify version 4.5.4.6.0 install okay so now that the installations are done we are going to go to our main file by the way the project name is money counter and uh, we have the main file which is the default file that we already have and we are going to delete everything within it now we are going to write import cv2 and we are going to start off with the webcam so we are going to write uh, cap equals cv2 dot video capture and we are going to capture from device number one. Now for you, it will be device number zero. If you're not connecting multiple cameras, I have a lot of cameras connected. So this one is ID number one. And then you can specify the width and the height uh, by writing cap.set. So the width is 640 and cap.set, which will be ID number four is 480 so you can specify the size which you want and then you can write while true wait what future warning <laughs> what is that uh while true success and image image equals cap dot read and then we are going to write that cv2 cv2 dot i am show 
and we will give it a name let's say image and img and then we will write cv2 dot weight key and we'll give a delay of one millisecond so this is pretty much the boilerplate template code for running the webcam that is why i'm not uh, going slow i'm trying to accelerate the process so let's run it and see what do we get so my webcam is connected yes it is so let's wait for it to open up so here is the webcam feed and as you can see i have two coins over here uh, now these are rupees so this is five rupees and this is two rupees and this is one rupee so we are going to differentiate between these right now uh, the the background is black and we have some light shining upon it that's why it's very bright and it's not able to see all the all the details but that doesn't really matter to us because what we want is the contours the edges so we don't care about the inner details uh, but we do care about the color a little bit so if the color is not differentiable then uh, differentiate able uh, then you should change the lighting condition so now the good thing about this project is that it is under controlled environment so we don't have to have a lot of variations so for example if the camera is set at a distance it will remain at that distance from the coins and uh, the positioning the angles all of them will remain the same all you have to do is you have to bring in uh, uh, the different coins and that's it so that's why we can rely on hard code values as well so we have three different coins the first one as i mentioned is one rupee and the second one is two and the third one is five so these are the three different types uh, that we have so how do we differentiate between these so if i if i lower the light a little bit you can see the color a little bit better you can see it is golden uh, the five rupee is actually golden and the other two are silver so right now what we are doing is we are differentiating okay so right now what we are doing is we are differentiating between them and what exactly can we do to differentiate so now i've turned off the light and you can see that it's a little bit better i've turned off one of the lights so uh, we can see a little bit better so the golden one is five rupee this is two rupees and this is one rupee so what you can do is you can try it with your own coins whatever country you are in you can try the coins for that and that is why we are going through the process of what exactly is the thought process behind this algorithm so we have three different coins that we want to differentiate so how can we differentiate them now the size of these two is pretty much the same so how can we differentiate between these two we can differentiate with the color so the color of this and the color of this is different so this is golden and this is silver and the color of this is golden and the size of this is different so this is a much bigger size than these two so these two are also different in size but the difference is very small so we might get a lot of error if we just do by size so what we have to do is we have to differentiate these two by color and we have to differentiate this from these two by size so two things size and color these are the things that we are going to use to differentiate so now the first step would be to actually find the placement of these coins so we need to find the shape of these coins from there we can check the area and from there we can check the color so first of all finding the actual coins is the main task so what can we do we can use the contours method and OpenCV provides us with this contour method now within uh, the CV zone package we have find contours function which actually is a wrapper for the OpenCV function and it provides more functionality and a little bit um, 
easier use than OpenCV directly. So we are going to use that. We'll write from CV zone dots. Uh, no, we'll just import CV zone. Import CV zone. And over here, we are going to write uh, CV zone, CV zone dot find contours. So here we have to give in the image, the main image, and then we have to give in the pre-processed image. Now the pre-processed image is basically a binary image. So it's black and white. So we don't have any black and white image right now. So we need to pre-process our existing image and then send it to find contours. So here we are going to define a function. We are going to write it pre-processing. And within this pre-processing, we will just get in an image and we are going to return. Uh, what are we going to return? We are going to return image pre. So this will be the pre-processed image. So we can write that the image image pre equals. Now we are going to go through the steps of pre-processing. The first step is to add a little bit of blur. When it's too sharp, the contours will be too edgy and it will try to find the noise as well. It will detect that. So when it's a little bit blurred, then it will be smoother edges. So we are going to add Gaussian blur. So we'll write Gaussian blur and we will give in the source image. And then we have to give in the size of the kernel, which will be five by five. And then we have to give in the sigma. Again, these are values that you can try yourself. Right now, we are just blurring to a random value that we think that should be fine. So based on trial and error. So let's not go there. First of all, we are going to write that our image pre-processed equals uh, pre-processing and we will send in our image. So now we can view the pre-processed image as well. Image pre and image pre. There you go. So here is the blurred image and here you can see the original image. By the way, what we can do is we can put them together and uh, it will be easier for us to play around with this image and see their effect. So what we can do is we can use CV zone, CV zone dot stack images and then we have to give in the list of images we want to stack. So we want to stack image and image pre. And then we have to give in the number of columns that we need. So we can say we need two columns. So next to each other and the third one will go down. And the scale, let's keep it as it is. So if you wanted to reduce the scale, we can write 0 0.5, 0 0.7. If you wanted to increase, we can do that too. So we will remove this and just instead of image, we are going to write image stacked equals this and we are going to display the image stacked. So this way it will be easy for us to play around with these values and uh, we don't have to play around with a lot of windows. There you go. So now we have a single image and uh, these images, both of them, they are stacked together and it will be easy for us to work with. Okay, so this is the first step of the pre-processing. Uh, the second step is the canny. So we need to find the edges and we will find them using the canny function. So we will write image pre equals cv2 dot canny. Canny and we are going to write the image and uh, it will be image pre. And then we have to give in the thresholds. So the the threshold is basically let's let's say it's 150 and 200. So the maximum is 255 for both of them. But let's see what it does. Let's just uh, try it out first and then I will explain how can we get better values out of this. There you go. So now we are getting the canny image. So and it is giving us a very good circle. But let's imagine it was not. 
So what exactly can we do? How can we find that threshold? Where is the good value? So uh, what you can do is you can create a tracking bar, a tracking bar for threshold one and a tracking bar for threshold two, which you can move around and play with the values live. So here I can change it to, let's say 50, and I can change this to 150 and I can go and run it again. Then I can come back and change and run it again. That is a very inefficient way to do it. So therefore, what we can do is we can change it live and see the results in real time. So how can we do it? We can write here cb2 dot named window and we will call it settings. And then we are going to write cb2 dot resize window resize window and we have to give in the same name make sure the spellings are correct and then we'll give in 640 by 240 so this is the size of this window once we have that now we can add the track bar so we'll write cv2 dot uh, create track bar and we are going to give it a name so let's say this is threshold one and then we are going to give in the window name settings and then we are going to give in the value so the value let's say the starting value let's say is 50 and the maximum value is 255 that's what it says and once it is changed we have to give in a function what happens when it changes so we will write here empty and we will create a simple function here called empty def empty and we will give in a random value and we will say pass so this is the basic idea so this will create threshold one and this is a threshold two there you go and uh, again we can put let's say 100 now we need to grab these values in real time and push them to our candy function so here we are going to write that our threshold one equals we are going to write cv2 dot get cv2 dot get uh track bar or is it what get track bar position and we have to give in threshold one and we have to give in the window name so it will be settings and the same thing will happen to threshold 2 we can write here threshold 2 and we will write here threshold 2 and we will change th these values to threshold 1 and threshold 2 so let's run this and hopefully this time around we will have a new window with two track bars on it which we will move and we will get the results in real time and we have an error assertion failed get track bar position oh sorry it's not thresh, it's threshold one and threshold two. My bad. There you go. So now we have the thresholds. So if I change this, if I go really low, you can see the effect. There you go. Now I can keep moving it until I get some good results and the noise is gone. So here you can see these, these are good results. So again, you can play around with this and see what happens in real time. So what we can do is we can add, we can add different coins and see its effects. So let's see, we are getting all of them and maybe we need to change this a little bit more. There you go. So here it's quite good. Put another one. Then we put another one there you go so it's it's quite good as you can see the results are quite good so 
uh, the value is 219 and 233. So here for the value, we'll write 219 and 233. So by default, it will use these values now. And we can turn, turn it off as well, but we, we can keep it uh, just in case. Okay, so this is the second step of the pre-processing, which is the canny. And after the canny, we can uh, dilate. Dilate means that we will thicken it a little bit so that if there are any gaps or anything, uh, it will fill up those. And we will also use closing method to uh, close any contours that are open. So both of these will help pretty much in the same manner. And the dilation will help uh, thicken and making the the corners, the, the shapes more prominent. So we are going to define a kernel, which will be using NumPy. So here we have to add uh, import NumPy as NP. And using NP, where is it? Using NP, NP dot ones. Uh, once we are going to create a kernel of one by one, one by one. And it will be uh, using the, the format of NumPy, uh, unsigned integers of eight bits. Okay, so that is the case. And then we are going to write that image, uh, image preprocessed equals cv2 dot dilate and we have to give in our image and we will give in the kernel and we will give the number of iterations as one so let's see what that does this image should be image pre-processed my bad so there you go uh, it won't be a big difference you put three by three as the kernel, you will feel a little bit uh, bigger difference. So the dilation function is also there. In case it doesn't work out well, you can use dilation to increase the number of iterations or you can increase the kernel size and that will help out a little bit. So here you can see that dilation uh, taking the effects and it looks really good and then we are going to add the morphology for closing so we are going to write image pre equals cv2 dot morphology and then we are going to give in our image pre-processed and we will write cv2 dot more close so if there are any uh, small areas that are open, it will close them. In our case, we don't have them right now, but in case we do, this will close it up. There you go. So now we are ready and we are getting the edges, but we don't know its location. We know we have differentiated, we have got the edges, but we don't really know where is the center point, what is the area of it, and what is the color of it, and so on. So what we will do is we will find these contours, we will find their positioning, and based on this positioning, uh, we will find their area, and uh, then we are going to apply other methods. So we are going to use the find contours function that we were discussing earlier. So we will write here that our image pre-processed is this, and then we have to give in the minimum area. Uh, the minimum area, let's just put 20 or 30, any small value, uh, because we don't have a lot of noise at this point, so we will keep the value small. Uh, but again, you can play around with this, or you can even create a new track bar and have the area as a variable and then change it and see what area you are getting better results with. Again, because this is a controlled environment, we can 
have a little bit of hard coded values as well because we know the environment is controlled we know that the camera is x distance from the coins uh, and the size will remain the same the number of pixels uh, will be very similar uh, in terms of uh, the values so in terms of the count so we can assume a few things uh, we can make them constant okay so now that we have this it will return us two things it will return us an image so we will write here image contours and it will also return us the contours or should we call it confound confound equals this so the contours found will be in the contours found confound and the image will be generated with these contours so we will copy that and we will paste it here oh no actually we have the stuff i forgot <laughs> See. so we will write here image contours there we go so let's wait for it to run there you go so now we are getting the positioning uh, we are getting the circle you can see there is a circle around this the contour we are also getting the rectangle around it the bounding box we call it and we are also getting the center position now it is flickering a little bit but overall it seems good it seems stable so I, I believe if you play around with the lighting a little bit it will get even more stable so I, I believe that is the issue uh, at this point because here you can see uh, specifically this one uh, if i put my hand a little bit around you can see uh, the color is more visible but if i remove it uh, the color it, it fades a bit uh, especially for this one this position is not that great so if we bring it here maybe it's better no <laughs> something with this coin no okay yeah, here it's a little bit better so uh yeah the, the again the lighting will affect all of this let me actually change a little bit the problem with the lighting is that i need a bit of light so that you can see me uh i have this the core lights let me turn it off and see if it will make an effect yeah it does but now it's very dark uh, you cannot see we can see on one side on this side it's very dark uh, that's the idea so but again you will be able to see a little bit better the coins and the colors so uh, in your case because you will not be recording uh, you can turn off lights and you can have very specific lights so that it's uh, it, it's it's visible it's better in terms of color and exposure okay so this is good so far we are heading in the right direction now what we need to do is first of all we need to make sure that it is a circle so we will say that if the number of edges the number of corner points is greater than an x amount then it means it is a circle so if it's three edges it's a triangle if it's four edges it's a rectangle or a square but if it's more than that if it's let's say six seven eight nine ten or whatever the value is then it is a circle so we want to get only circles so if you bring a rectangle in it it is not detected as a coin now uh, normally you wouldn't care about this because it is a controlled environment you are the one selecting what goes in and out so but still it's it's a good measure to add that if statement that if we are getting a circle then only do that so here we will write if confound has something in it then only try to get it so uh, we will write that for contour in confound uh, we are going to loop through all the contours in confound but what exactly are we getting if we click on find contours uh, if we press the control button and we click on find contours it will take us to that method 
or uh, it will take us to that function and here you can see it gives us confound and here in the append you can see it gives us the contour all of the contours it gives us the area it gives us the bounding box and it gives us the center so whatever information we need we can simply get it uh, very easily like that so all we have to do is we have to write contour contour and in bracket because it is a dictionary you can see this is a dictionary so if i write uh, c and t it will give me the value of the contour if i write area it will give me the value of the area if i write what was the other thing center uh, it will give me the center value so this is how simple it is uh, when we are using the cv zone um, library So first thing we will do, we are going to check the number of uh, corners that we have. So the way we do it is actually available in utilities here. Uh, it's this method. We can just copy that and we can paste it here. So here it says that we have to get the contour. So let's change that to contour and we will write c and t and that will happen again over here there you go so what exactly this is doing it's creating a parameter this is using the arc length and then it's getting the approximate polygon count so the number of corner points it has so this approximation length will be the total number of corners. So if I write length and approx, this will give me the total number of corner points. So we are going to say print length of approximation. So this will tell us what exactly are we getting uh, in terms of circle. So there you go. So most of them are eight. Actually, all of them are eight, which is quite surprising. Uh, all of them are eight. So we can say that if it's greater than, let's say, six or five. So we can write here, if the length of a prox is greater than five, then we will do the rest. Uh, what is the rest? Uh, we are going to get the bounding box information and then we are going to uh, check the area and all that so now that we have so now that we have made sure that it is a circle we need to start differentiating so how are we differentiating we are differentiating based on the area and we are differentiating based on the color so what we can do is we can say that if area is greater than a certain amount then it is the coin number two because that is the biggest coin so we will check the area for that coin and for the other two we are going to check based on color so we will do that later on so here we will just print out the area so if uh, it's greater than five then we are going to print the area which will be contour and we will simply write area so let's print that and see uh, what area difference are we getting between the number two and number five coin or number one coin. So there you go. So let's have a look at these numbers. So clearly we have coin which is 2000 close to 2000 then we have a coin 1900 then 1800 1800 1800 and then there you go here is a big coin 2875 2853 2794 2320 so there's a big difference between these two so let's just put only uh, right now it's live we can go down and it will show us the real-time values 
So let's just remove all the coins and we are simply going to put one coin and let's see the area of that. So it is 2800. We'll put the area for the second one, 2700. Again, it's the same coin. So 2700, 2800, that's the area of this bigger coin. Okay. So then let's check the one for number five. So it is 1800, something like that. And then uh, let's put another one. So it's 1800, 1900. Let's put this again, 1800, 1900. So 1900 something. And then let's put one. So this is 2100. 2200 2100 so right now what i can see is based on just the area we can differentiate so if so if that was not enough you could do the color as well and i will show you how to do the color as well but for now let's just do it based on area so one of them is let's put each one of them this is the smallest one. It's 1800, 1900, something like that. So we can say if it's below 2000, then it is number five. And then if we put this, we are getting more than 2100. So let's put another one, 2200. So we can say if it's above 2100, then it is coin number one. And then if we put this, it's 2,800, 2,700. So we can say if it's above 2,500, then it is coin number two. So let's put it here. So the area, area equals contour area. And we will write that here we have the total money total money equals zero and over here we are going to say that if the area is less than two thousand let's say fifty then we are going to say total money plus equals five so this is the smallest one that we have uh, which is rupees five then we will say else if area is in between two zero five zero and two five hundred then we are going to say total money plus equals one then we are going to say else the total money equals uh, plus equals two. So it will keep adding. So and then we can simply print total money. So let's run this and see if we are getting the correct values. Okay, we are not getting correct values because we didn't reset. So here, whenever we start, we have to say total money equals zero. So we have to reset every time. Otherwise, it keeps adding on to the previous value. There we go. So the total value is six, which is correct because all of these are twos so we have two plus two plus two and that is six so let's remove that uh, let's put a five and there you go it says five then let's put a one and it says one rupee so we can add five and one it should give us six plus two it should give us eight plus five it should give us 13 and there you go so it's quite good and uh, what we can do 
is we can print this on the screen. We can use CV zone. You can use OpenCV as well. But here we will use CV zone dot put text rect because it will put the text and it will put a rectangle behind the text. So it will be easy to read. So we will give in the image and uh, we, we will give an image stack. Let's give it that. And let's put it after this image stack. And then what we have to give in, what is the next one? Um, the next one is the text and the position. So the text will be string uh, or let's put an F string and we will write here rupees dot and we will give in the total money and then the position let's put as 50 50. There we go. So now we are getting rupees 13. And if I remove two, you can see it says five. If I put there, it says seven because I added two. And then if I add another two, it says nine. Let's add a lot of them and see if it can count. There you go. So it's telling us it's 34. So this is quite good. And uh, what you can do is, uh, now if you bring it very close, it will give you wrong reading because it will detect both of them as one. So you have to make sure that there is enough distance between those to detect them separately. So if that is the case, it will detect them properly. So if it's close, but if it's differentiable, then it should work fine. So see, when it flickers, because it's not able to detect them as different. So let's put this one here. There you go. So in line, you have 25 rupees. Then let's put the twos. And let's put the ones. And it should give us 34. There you go. So this is 34 rupees in total. Now, when it comes to color, right now, the, the difference between color is not that great but still we can find the difference between the gold and the silver now a lot of countries will have the same size coin and uh, or it might not be as uh, differentiate able as these three so in that case what you can do is you can use color and how can you use color let me explain so you can write here from cv zone dot color module import color finder and you can uh, press on the control button and click on the mouse and it will take you to its function uh, its class and here you can see you can define it by my color finder equals color finder let's copy that go to the main and we are going to add that my color finder color finder is false i will tell you what that is and then you have to add a custom color so we will use this custom color but for now just copy the orange that's fine uh, hsv values are these and then all you have to do is you have to write it like this uh, img orange my color finder dot update image hsv values so we will copy that and we will paste it in our main loop so we will paste it here or let's paste it above it so here it is updating the color but for now what we will do is we will write here true so this is for testing if it's true uh, it will allow us to change the value and find the actual color just put it true and at the bottom instead of orange just write image color so we are going to display this image color separately so we will copy this paste it here and we will write here image color and then we are going to write here image color so let's run that and we will get the track bar automatically for the color because that is included in the class and once you put it as true color finder this is basically a boolean 
uh, that tells you whether you are debugging or not, whether you are finding the color or not. There you go. So this is the image color we are getting, and this is the track bar. Now what we have to do is we have to make sure the color remains and the rest is gone. So we will remove all of the rest and we'll make sure only that color is visible. There you go. So this is better. Again, right now, in my case, it's not very good because uh, the lighting condition, if I turn off the lights, it will be much better. Uh, but I believe if you have different color coins, this method will work. So here we are getting these values. So we will go back and we will open up this track bar. And you can see here, it's already outputting us this value. So we will go till the end and we will copy this whole thing. And we will simply replace it over here. This is our new HSV value. So 0, 0, 0.0014563.91255. So this is our HSV value. Okay. So let's run it again. And by default, it will give us uh, the detection of that color because we have changed the HSV values. Wait, I forgot one thing. We have to change this to false. Now we are not debugging. We have the actual HSV value and we are going to use it. So that's what we are writing here. So let's try that out. There you go. So now we are directly getting those colors and that seems to work well. Okay. So now that we have the color, what we can do is we can individually grab the points grab each coin individually and check how many uh, how much color do we have in it so we will convert it into a mask so if i change if i write here this is basically giving us the mask this color finder is giving us the mask so what we will do is for each of these coins we are going to find the mask the mask wherever it finds that color, it will make it white, and the rest will be black. Once we have the mask, we will count the number of individual pixels that are white. If there's a lot of white, it means we have detected that color. If it's not, it means we did not. Okay, so how can we do that? It's very simple. Uh, we have the X and Y values. So X, Y, width and height equals contour and uh, contour uh, bounding box so this is the bounding box of the contour and using this bounding box we can simply create a cropped image so we will write here image crop equals image and then we are going to give in the x uh, no it starts with y so y and then we will give y plus h and then x and we will give x plus width and this will create a new image of that single coin just to make sure just to make sure we are going to show it so cv2 dot i am show and we will give it a name mm, okay to give it a, a different name each time uh, over here for contour in contour found what we can do is we can write here count and here we can write enumerate so this will give us the iteration number and we can use that iteration number as our name so we can write here count and then we can write here image crop so cv2 yeah it should work let's see so now we should get all these individual coins as different images. And once we have that, we can simply replace it here and then we can count the number of pixels.
there you go so now you can see we have each and every single coin over here we can be right click no right click maximize all show all windows stacked no that was bad um, right click minimize all windows right click restore all windows okay so uh, yeah this is basically all the coins different coins we are getting all these images and it seems to work fine so now what we will do is instead of checking the color in the main image we will check the color individually in these coins so here we will write instead of image we will write image crop and within this image crop we are going to find the number of pixels that are non zero okay so we will write here cv2 dot uh, i forgot the name it was count non zero and we will give in the mask okay and uh, then we will give here the white pixel count equals this and then we will write print white white pixel count and do we have another print yeah we have total map we will remove that and let's see so now it will show us the count for each uh, coin so whether it's a silver coin or a golden coin it will give us the count for all of them so it's on us how we can differentiate so we will differentiate based on the total pixel we'll give it a threshold there you go so here clearly you can see that these are lower values 68 41 1 10 9 these are very low values so pretty much noise but here 1700 1700 1600 1600 1500 these are big values so these are five of them one two three four five and as you can see we have five coins uh, which are golden which are for five rupees and that's why we are getting this so if I open it up uh, this one here so right now let me just go down till the end because we're getting live feed and here we have this so if I remove two of them actually let's remove all of them so it will not give me anything if I put the golden coin it will give me 1600 right if I put silver coin it gives me very low values again if I put a one again it gives me very low values when it's silver no matter how many silver I put it will give me low values as soon as I put a golden one it will give me high values you can see one of them is high around 1300 so here you can see high value here high value here it will be low value there you go so this one is silver this one is golden so based on this we can also differentiate between these coins so right now I can say if the pixel count is above let's say uh, 500 then it means it is a uh, five rupees it is a golden coin and if it's below that then it means it's silver and then for the silver I can check the area so this is how you can add to this if statement as well but I'm not going to do that because we are already getting pretty good results uh, just with the area so if we run it and let me remove the I am show because that's a lot and um, yeah we, we don't need any prints we can remove the white pixel count as well so let's run that and see the final result of our image and what we can do is we can do one more thing uh, we can uh, have the last image as a big value and we can write rupees five detected or something like that so because we have this empty space at the edge why is this showing up why is this small coin showing up I removed all of them oh this is the image color maybe is it is it the image color yeah it's the image color so we'll remove that too 
And as you can see, the last one is actually empty. So there's nothing there. So what we can do is we can write here big rupees, whatever. So let's do that. So we can create a new image and we can create a new image simply by writing image, uh, let's say empty or let's say image count equals uh, numpy dot zeros and we are going to give in the size so the size will be 640 by 480 and then we have to give in the type so it will be numpy dot uh, unsigned integer of 8 bits so this will create us uh, image and this will be a black image and on top of this we can basically add uh, the, the, the number of the total money okay so how can we do that we can simply okay we can uh, write here we are putting it on the main image we can also put it on this so we will write it on image count and we will make it much bigger so the scale let's say is 10 and the positioning is let's say 640 by 480 so let's put this as 100 and let's put this as 480 so let's put it at 300 let's see how it looks like no 300 will be too much uh, let's put it at 200 Oh, I forgot to add it here. So we will write here image count. So the last image will have that count. Okay, so we are getting an error and it's regarding the stacking 480 has size 480 and the rain index has size 640. Oh, okay, so when you are creating the image uh, for NumPy, the height is first and the width is second. And it's opposite for OpenCV, that's why it's conflicting. So we have to write 480 by 640 there you go we have something but it's showing white here so that's not good why is it showing white because it's not really a colored image why is it not a colored image because again i forgot why am i doing so many mistakes so it should be three channels i forgot to add the three at the end that's why there you go so now we have rupees five and let's put in a two and it becomes 72 <laughs> then we put a one and becomes 83 so what is happening is that this image is not updating so what we have to do is we have to put this inside the the loop so the way we are initializing or repeating uh, the total money we have to do it for the image as well so we have to uh, recalibrate it uh, every single time and over here the scale is fine and we will add offset as well offset uh, let's say 50 what is the default value of the offset so offset is 10 let's make it 30 and uh, the thickness is 3 let's make it 7 the thickness equals 7 scale is 10 offset is 30 so let's run that and hopefully we will get some better results there you go so now we have rupees 8 remove that rupees 0 
we put it's one rupee here we have six here we have eight let's add another five it becomes 13 let's add another one it becomes 18 let's add one let's add one it becomes 19 21 23 1 5 and another 5 so we have 34 in total and that's it so as you can see this is our project it's quite simple to implement it's very easy and you can see we have done it under uh, 70 or 80 lines of code and uh, it's quite easy and fun project and you can say it's kind of a weekend project you can do in a few hours so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new i hope this was interesting for you if you would like to learn something very specific let me know what exactly it is uh, in the comments below if you like it if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you love it share it with your friends and i will see you in the next one